What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13.4.1 a couple of weeks after the release of iOS 13.4. Now this also comes one week after the release of iOS 13.4.5 developer beta one. So like I said in that video last week, Apple is beta testing iOS 13.4.5, but iOS 13.4.1, Point two, point three, and point four will all be public releases that do not need beta testing. So we should be seeing those public releases rolled out continuously over the next few weeks. But anyways, in this video, we're talking all about iOS 13.4.1 and what's new in this software. So starting off with the size, you can see here the size was very small on all devices. It was around 95 megabytes on the iPhone 11 series and also the iPhone 10s and 10s Max series here. It was a little bit smaller on my iPad Pro 2020. It came in at around 72 megabytes on that device. So of course that was coming from 13.4. The size will vary depending on the version you're coming from. Now, as far as the build number goes, if we go into our settings general about 13.4.1, you can see the build there is 17E262. And then if we scroll down a little bit further to the modem firmware version, you can see it is unchanged in this update. It's 2.05.13 for this generation of iPhones. And then for the iPhone 11 series, it's 1.05.28 but that is unchanged from iOS 13.4. So now what's actually new with iOS 13.4.1? As you can see here, Apple did give us two little bullet points, some new things in this update. So we're gonna go ahead and cover those first. And there is one additional one on the iPad as well for iPad OS 13.4.1. But you can see here the first one fixes an issue where devices running iOS 13.4 could not participate in FaceTime calls with basically older devices like iOS 9 devices and older Macs. So this was an issue I covered here on the channel in my iOS 13.4 follow-up. And this is actually pretty big. I don't think a lot of people realize how big this fix is, especially now with you know quarantine and everybody self-isolating. A lot of grandparents and older people still have iPhones and iPads running iOS 9. And you know, if you're trying to get in contact with them, obviously you can't see them right now because of the health issues going on. You don't want to be around them. So FaceTime is super popular right now. And this is actually a big issue. A lot of people were very upset about this in iOS 13.4. So luckily this update has fixed that and you can now FaceTime with older devices. And then the second bug fix here, it says addresses a bug with the settings app where choosing Bluetooth from the quick actions menu on the home screen would fail. So we covered this, you know, a few times in my beta videos and also in the iOS 13.4 final video, but basically when you went to settings right here and went to Bluetooth, it would just completely crash the settings application and it would not pull up the Bluetooth screen. So that has been fixed in this update. Now, as for iPad OS 13.4.1, you can see we do have an additional fix right here and it's right in the middle. It says addresses an issue on iPad Pro 12.9 inch fourth generation, which is this one right here and iPad Pro 11 inch second generation where the flashlight may not turn on after tapping the flashlight button in control center or on the lock screen. So I don't think I've used the flashlight one time on my new 2020 iPad Pro, but apparently it did not turn on every single time. It was a little bit buggy in 13.4, and that's been fixed here in 13.4.1. But the other two are exactly the same, and I would expect everything else to be the same except for that additional bug fix for the iPad. Now, another major issue in iOS 13.4 was a bug slash vulnerability with VPNs. So in iOS 13.4, it would prevent VPNs from fully encrypting your traffic and your data when you had a VPN connected. Like when you're actually using a VPN, not all of your data and all of your information was actually being encrypted. So that's a pretty big deal, especially for security and privacy. And it's unclear if this is actually fixed in iOS 13.4.1 or not. I would think that Apple would mention it, you know, on the changes page right here, but they did not mention it. So I'm going to test this and I will, you know, continue to follow coverage online and everything to see if this has actually been fixed in 13.4.1, but that's a pretty major bug. And I would assume that Apple did fix it, but we will have to wait and see on that. Now, briefly going back to Bluetooth, I did also want to mention that Bluetooth connectivity has improved a lot with iOS 13.4, especially from 13.3.1. A lot of people had issues like with the iPad with a controller or a magic mouse, it would not connect or just disconnect randomly. That appears to be fixed mostly in 13.4, and I would assume fully 
and 13.4.1, but I will be testing that with my iPad Pro to see if I have any more random disconnects or if it just you know struggles to connect sometimes. But just know that if you were having Bluetooth connectivity issues, those may be fixed here in this update. Now, alongside iOS 13.4.1, Apple did also update their Clips application. So if you do use this to edit, you will see an update today. It's gonna to be 2.1.1 as the version number. And this actually adds support for mouse, trackpad, and Bluetooth keyboards on iPad. So if you do have those devices for the iPad, you will be able to use those with clips now seamlessly. Now we also get a lot of minor updates as well and some new like Mickey and Minnie Mouse stickers as well. So some other minor fixes in there as well. So if you do use the clips application, just know that that has also been updated today. Now, as far as existing bugs go, there is still the bug where you take a picture and then you go into the picture and try to edit it right away. It'll be grayed out. It seems that that still appears to be present in 13.4.1. I tried this on my iPhone 11 Pro Max and then also on the iPhone XS Max here, but of course I think it was an issue with Deep Fusion, so it will be more apparent on the iPhone 11 series of iPhones. We also did not see any kind of improvement to CarPlay with the third-party maps showing right here. We were supposed to see third-party map applications show up right here instead of the default Apple Maps, but Waze has still not been updated, so we still do not see that yet and nothing changes here with 13.4.1. As for the Instagram audio bug, where audio would continue playing after you leave out of the application, that appears to be fully fixed. I believe it was fully fixed in 13.4, and I will be testing it on 13.4.1, but it should be fully fixed. So thankfully, that annoying bug seems to be squashed for now. But of course, the text message bug that I mentioned a lot on this channel, where I don't get the notifications on my lock screen, that was not fixed in 13.4, and I will have to do some testing on 13.4.1 to see if it's been fixed, and I will let you guys know next week in my follow-up after I've been using this on my daily device for a week. Now, as far as performance goes, performance should be exactly the same as iOS 13.4, but it could seem a little bit more smooth and polished due to bug fixes if you were facing bugs in 13.4, and those have been fixed in this update. It may appear to be faster, but it should be exactly the same as 13.4 in terms of raw speed and raw performance. As you can see here on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, this was the score I got on iOS 13.4, so 1327, 3528, and then on 13.4.1, you can see it's 1334, 3410. So a higher single core and a lower multi-core score. But once again, like I always say, Geekbench scores do not tell the full story and performance should feel about exactly the same as it was on 13.4. So definitely do not upgrade if you're just planning on seeing performance improvements. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life is going to be the exact same situation iOS 13.4 got the best battery life I and many others who commented on my videos have had yet in iOS 13. So I would assume that nothing at all would change in this department, but I will update you on that next week after using 13.4.1 for a week on my daily device, which right now is the 11 Pro Max. So now should you update to iOS 13.4.1? And I say that if you had any of the issues I mentioned in this video, you should go ahead and update, especially if you had Bluetooth connectivity issues or if you use a VPN, of course that big bug slash vulnerability is kind of a big deal. So you should definitely go ahead and update to 13.4.1. But if iOS 13.4 is running perfectly fine for you, you have no complaints, your battery life performance, everything is good, then there's really no point in updating. You could, but there's no real reason to. But like always, it likely will not hurt to update to 13.4.1. It could introduce new bugs, but the chances of that are pretty slim since it is a point of a point update. And for those of you on the public beta program, unfortunately, you still do not have iOS 13.4.5 beta one, which is kind of strange. It's been a while you know, since we've had developer beta one, so you could get it tomorrow, it's possible, but you could also get it next week when 13.4.5 beta two gets released to developers. And that's also what I wanted to talk about, which is what's next to come from Apple. So I think 13.4.5 beta two is more likely than iOS 13.4.2, unless the VPN bug is not fully fixed in this update. And like I said, we're also likely to get the first public beta of 13.4.5 next week if we do not get it this week. And that will likely be released alongside 13.4.5 developer beta two. So I'm thinking exactly a week from now, probably on April 14th is when we will see most likely 13.4.5 beta two but there is also a possibility of 13.4.2 if the VPN bug is not fully fixed. But we shall see, Apple always throws curveballs our way. I'm just hoping for a weekly release, you know, for a while now. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.4.1. And just stay safe, guys. Please don't go to the grocery store, go anywhere in public if you don't absolutely need to. And if you do, wear a mask, 
don't wear gloves. Gloves don't help if you touch your phone and you know you take your gloves off, then you touch your phone with your bare hand later. That's cross contamination. It does not help at all. So just be educated on what's going on right now and be safe. Take it seriously. It's very, very bad out there right now. So I hope you guys all stay safe from this. I hope your family stays safe. And yeah, I hope you guys stay tuned for the next video on iOS updates. If you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss my follow-up coming next week. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh,